Hello lovely, welcome to the Human Flower Podcast. This is episode one, and we're getting right into the juice. We're talking about your inner rhythm. So this is another term, another phrase to name our inner cycle or the menstrual cycle. Of course, we have many inner cycles, but one of the focuses for the Human Flower Podcast is this beautiful, physical, energetic, and emotional cycle that really affects every layer of our being that we call the menstrual cycle. So welcome, my name is Jaylin. I'm going to be your guide today through this topic. I hope that you're comfortable. Maybe you have a little tea to sip on as you listen. Cozy. So, what does it mean to live in rhythm with ourselves? This is a question I ask myself literally every single day. What does it mean to live in rhythm or better yet in authenticity with ourselves and our inner knowing and our inner feeling? So all living beings have their own rhythm and process, right? We see other beings, other species in their process, and we tend to be very open to that. So like a seed that takes root, then sprouts, then unfurls into a beautiful flower, then perhaps grows into a plump fruit, and finally detaches and decays, dies, and so on, so too do we humans undergo our own inner rhythm and process of birth, growth, fullness, and decay or letting go or death. This is how the feminine moves. By feminine, I mean that mother energy, that creative energy that is quite literally the reason why we're all here. (laughs) So this is how the feminine moves. This is how nature moves. And this is how the menstrual cycle moves. The menstrual cycle in particular has its own rhythm of this birth and death process. So we could think of our inner rhythm, our menstrual cycle, as being on its own timeline within us And every layer of our being is affected by this inner movement. The cycle is a living and organic timeline, meaning it will shift and change. It responds to environments, both inner and outer. And we really do have our own wild intelligence within that is quite interdependent but also independent from the outer timelines and what's going on around us. So what I see often and what I've seen in myself and what I see often in other women, in us, is this feeling of overwhelm and overstimulation that results from trying to force ourselves into a timeline that is simply not ours. It's not natural to us. So many of us, right, are living in this state of chronic overwhelm and overstimulation, and that manifests in countless different ways. But at its core, at its root, This arises from simply not living in our own timeline. So that's trying to force ourselves within maybe a societal timeline, societal pressures, maybe the timeline of our families or what the people around us expect of us. Maybe we live in a programmed timeline that we even learned way back when through grade school, (laughs) or even one we've conjured up, that we've created in our own minds, that is just not in alignment with our energy and our body. 
So yes, our mind can be misaligned from our inner nature. Our inner nature doesn't really have an agenda. And it's not really programmable. But our mind is. So those two can be a bit disjointed. And in any case, any time we attempt to create and live or operate on any timeline other than our own natural one, we become very susceptible to, again, overwhelm, feelings of frustration, feeling misaligned, not aligned with the energy that we really want to be creating and living in. And we even make ourselves more susceptible to dis-ease physical, mental, or otherwise. So there can be a lot of disharmony in the sense of like disjointedness, things not quite like linking up. So the simple answer, not the easy answer, but the simple answer to this is just to get back on our own natural timeline to not let ourselves be rushed or pressured. Because we can try to rush our growth with a lot of frustration, (laughs) but we can't really rush our growth. Just the same way we can't rush the natural process of a flower unfurling. It takes time and it's going to be on its own time. Right, so the, the same is true for us. But what we can do is get into rhythm with ourselves just by feeling ourselves, getting into receptivity with our inner feeling so that we can be in energetic alignment and feel in harmony or at home in ourselves. Again, it's simple, but it's not easy, but it's simple. But just doing this, right, just by feeling into ourselves, this breeds creativity, this breeds confidence, this is very conducive to clarity and insight. When we're not at odds with ourselves, but instead we get into this rhythm and dance with ourselves, it can feel like a non-happening, right? Like it's not this big event, it's just like you're you're just coming back to home frequency. Once you get there, you realize this is where you always kind of were and you have no idea how long you've been gone for, but it doesn't matter because here you are and you're back again. And it's not to say that we won't sometimes fall off of our rhythm. We do, right? But we come back. And the more often we come back, the more seamlessly we can come back. So it doesn't take maybe a whole week anymore to feel back into alignment with ourselves. Maybe now it just takes an hour of closing our eyes and going within or moving. Maybe it becomes instantaneous where we just step right back into ourselves the moment we notice we kind of got a little off pace. So when we talk about rhythm and being in rhythm with ourselves, this is what it's all about. This is why menstrual cycle awareness or womb awareness, because why not live in harmony with our dance? Why deny ourselves our own dance? This is one of the secrets of life. If all life is sound vibration, it's really just a song. And all songs have rhythm. It doesn't mean the rhythm won't change or that there aren't variations in that song. But there's a living pulse and a creative intelligence to it. And each of us is encoded with that creative intelligence, our own unique creative intelligence, our own unique energetic signature, and song, our own expression of this life force energy. 
So we must come back to trusting that, to trusting our process. As one of my favorite artists, Dev Hines, says in his song, no one is waiting for you anyway. No one's waiting for you anyway. We're all on our own path and journey. And I promise that the more we line up with our own energy and honor and embrace our nature, the more abundantly things in our life will flow anyway. Right? It's an abundance key. It's not something that we have to taper down, you know, the abundance in our life in order to live with our nature. No, it's the opposite. It's an abundance key. Things might take a little more time, but the growth will be real and it will be sustainable and it's going to feel so much better. In our bodies, we're going to embody where we are, in our hearts, in our minds. So I find that it can be really helpful to have like a visual framework for remembering the rhythm of our menstrual cycle. And this is what I'm currently spending much of my life energy on, is on sharing awareness of the menstrual cycle and understanding it like the plant life cycle. Because again, we can watch a plant's process and, you know, resonate with it and, and understand that that plant has its own rhythm. But when it comes to turning that gaze inward, there can sometimes be a bit of a rub. Not always, but sometimes a bit of a rub. So I'm so passionate about sharing an understanding of the cycle process as it's mirrored in nature around us in the plant life cycle. So it's raw, right? It's intelligent and it's super sweet. It invokes awe and wonder. So I'll invite you to dip your toes into that in a moment. And there are opportunities to take a deeper dive with me. You can find information on all the things that I'm up to on my website. That's innerswim.com. I-N-N-E-R-S-W-I-M.com. Innerswim. So with that flower, I hope that you're comfortable. Unless you're, you know, doing something or driving, <laughs> maybe you'd like to close your eyes. And just check in with yourself, just how you are in this moment. Start to call your energy back in. Check in with your breath cycle, your breath's rhythm. Check in with your body's energy levels, any currents of sensation. Just notice how they're moving, if they're moving, where they're flowing to. Check in with your mood. How does it feel to be you? How is your heart? And now guide yourself, guide your awareness into the seat of yourself, settling deep within the pelvic bowl. And just notice how it is to be seated here. Notice any energies that are present 
and all is welcome. And where are you today in your cycle? Are you quiet and inward drawn like a seed, shedding and beginning again? Are you growing and stretching with abundant energy like a sprout? Are you feeling full? Are you unfurling in soft petals of pleasure, beauty, and sensuality like a fertile flower? Or are you feeling full and rich, a bit heavy like a ripening fruit? bowing towards the earth. Just notice where you are, how it feels to be you in this place. And allow yourself to fully be here. There's nothing to be done with what you notice, just holding space to embody this place and all of the energies and all of your many expressions of them. And when you're ready, maybe taking a few deeper breaths or grounding your hands somewhere on your body. And just take this spacious moment, even if it's just this moment, to fully embrace your nature. And let it guide you onward as you move through the rest of your day or evening in your rhythm at your pace. You are so loved and supported, dear one. <sighs> so I leave you with gratitude and a few questions to sit with, journal about, draw about, whatever inspires you. And if you're in the community circle on Patreon will uh, bring up these questions in our upcoming circle and we'll just see what uh, came up for you. So question one, what are some daily practices like evening tea or morning journaling, for example, that really support your inner rhythm and how you're feeling inside. What are some daily practices that really support your inner rhythm? And question two, what time or times of day do you really resonate with? Do you love the morning, the afternoon, the evening? How does your state of mind and energy shift throughout the day? And let that just be an open question to maybe take with you as you move through the day. So what time of day do you really resonate with? And how does your state of mind and energy shift throughout the entire day? And question three. In what phase or phases of your menstrual cycle do you typically feel the most flow, the most ease? 
how about the phase you typically feel the most resistance? In what phase of your menstrual cycle do you typically feel the most ease? In what phase do you typically feel the most resistance? And this is all just for your own awareness practices, your own self-study. So I hope that you'll join me on Sunday, January 30th for the Human Flower Community Circle. This is live via Zoom through our Patreon members portal. Members of the Human Flower Circle receive monthly invitations to group meetings exploring topics, themes, and practices around cyclical living, feminine energy, womb wisdom, emotional freedom, and anything relevant to sensitive, cyclical beings like you and me. So we're healing together, we're expanding together, and all are truly welcome from across the globe. If you're interested in joining, visit patreon.com slash inner swim, join the community circle, or feel free to reach out at any time personally. My email is jaylyn, J-A-Y-L-Y-N, at innerswim.com, or you can visit my website, innerswim.com, for all the information. Ah. Thank you so much for listening, lovely. I hope this has landed well in your being, and I hope it inspires you through the rest of your day or evening. Thank you for listening. Power to the creative force within you and all beings. Until next time, Jema.